All right, so here we are, Pandemic Puppies Volume 2. This is was actually a live stream on Facebook, but we're edited in for YouTube so that you guys can watch it. So um, we talk in this video about feeding, when to feed, what to feed, how to feed, uh, give you a little demonstration about that. So stay tuned. Uh, make sure that if you're liking these videos that you like, subscribe, share, um, press all the buttons that you can. It helps the YouTube channel out and uh, go ahead and watch the video all the way through. This. So um, we're going to be feeding our dogs. First thing, first question we're going to ask is what are we going to feed the dogs? We need to talk about the difference between feeding kibble, the, the difference between feeding uh, a cooked diet or a raw diet. Now, the one thing that I'm going to say on the whole subject, shh, that's enough. Um, the one thing that I'm gonna say on the whole subject is dogs don't cook their food in the wild. Uh, it's a surprise to some, but they actually don't. So um, that kind of almost rules out the middle option of a cooked diet and it also has implications on the raw diet or i'm sorry on the kibble diet um, because what happens is whenever a food is raw it contains inside of it uh, these things called digestive enzymes and digestive enzymes actually help the dog digest the food and help it pull the nutrients out of it and so whenever we cook the food and get it prepared to sit on the shelf for two years, which is the uh, standard for dog kibble, that we actually cook out a lot of the digestive enzymes. And whenever we do that, that ends up causing problems. And uh, the dogs, th this is one of the big reasons why you're going to have a lot of the diseases that we're having in dogs is because there is not enough raw food in the diet that they're getting. And that causes lots of problems with their liver uh, and or it's either the liver or the kidneys, I don't know, but either way, one of those uh, waste processing units that we have, um, and that ends up that ends up uh, eventually causing disease, and, and, and that's why we end up losing our dogs earlier. So one of the things that we can do is we can either supplement our kibble diet, or we can feed a raw diet, and that, that leaves those digestive enzymes in there so that the dogs can digest it properly. They also have better weight control with that. Um, and all of this stuff is very good and it will help build longevity in your dog. And especially if you have one of those big dogs, like we have Martha here who is a Mastiff and they have long, long bones and they had, it is stressful on their joints. So we need to make sure that they're getting good fats in their diet to make sure that their joints stay good. Uh, we also need their muscles to stay nice and strong so that they can, um, so that they can you know, keep themselves together and so that they can uh, keep themselves moving on a regular basis because dogs, especially big dogs, need a lot of exercise. If you think about how many steps it takes a little dog to get across your floor and how many steps it takes a big dog, there's a lot less work for the big dog. So we need to make sure that we keep that in mind. So when feeding kibble, which we'll start with, um, we need to supplement it. We need to add something else to it. And that can be super complicated or it could not what, um, what I do personally is I add raw egg on top of the food. Now, eggs are in a hermetically sealed container. Um, bacteria doesn't get into them until you open them up. So if you crack the egg and put it directly on the food, you're not going to deal with any sort of bacteria. Also, the dogs are going to lick up at almost every single mini minuscule little part of the egg from their bowls. It's still not a bad idea to wash the bowls afterwards, but go ahead and... Um, keep yourself from worrying about that too much because the dogs are going to take care of that pretty much on their own. Um, but if you feel like washing the bowl, I'm perfectly down with that. So um, it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Um, you can put oils on the food. That helps a little bit. I prefer the egg because of the good cholesterols in it, um, because of the good fats that are in there, and also the protein. Um, and the raw factor of it adds those digestive enzymes to help them process the kibble, which is the bulk of the food. Now, when you're putting egg on your food, you don't have to, you don't have to use quite as much kibble. So keep that in mind. Um, the next question people usually have is what frequency to be perfectly honest. I don't do it a ton. Um, you could do it every single meal. You could do it once a week. Um, there's no exact right answer and it kind of depends on your dog. If you've got a little tiny dog and you're putting in a whole egg on their food all the time, every single meal, you're going to have a big fat dog and being, and dogs being overweight is one of the main contributors to, um, 
to health problems. You know, um, that's one of those things that uh, in the argument of uh, spaying and neutering, whether or not uh, these things are good for health reasons. And um, with male dogs, especially whenever you neuter them, you take a lot, take away a lot of their fat burning hor hormones. And if you're doing it for health reasons, and I'm not saying for any other reasons, but for health reasons only, then you tend to actually cause the dog more health problems by taking away their testosterone, by putting them in a position where it's more difficult for them to keep weight off. So moving on from that. So um, you're going to want to use your own discretion on that. You're going to want to watch the weight of your dog. That's another thing that uh, we talked about yesterday and I want to cover again today is how do I know how much to feed my dog? Um, it's, it's super difficult. Feed your, pick out an amount that you think is about right. Go by the directions on the bag or something like that and feed that amount to your dog and watch them and see if they gain weight or lose weight. If they lose weight, add a little bit to it. If they gain weight, take a little bit away. Simple as that. It's not a real big deal. We don't need to... We don't need to be super focused on exact amounts that we feed our dogs. I don't even measure the food in my dog bowls. I have a general amount, and if I see them starting to pork up a little bit, then I just don't feed them quite as much for a couple days. Um, let's also talk about frequency. In my opinion, it's not necessary to feed your dogs multiple times a day unless you have a puppy. Puppies are different. Puppies need nutrition on a very regular basis. And so until the dog is about a year old, you want to feed them probably, uh, you want to feed them no less than two times a day and probably three or four. And you, that doesn't mean you feed them a full serving four times a day. It means whatever their portion is for the day, you're going to divide that up and that will keep your puppy with the proper nutrition. You also need to, um, the, the whole egg thing, I wouldn't go about doing that with the puppies. First of all, they are in a better digestive position than the adults are, and so um, they don't need as much of that. Um, their bodies are still developing, and they and it's almost better to let their system struggle about it a little bit, so that they become so that their 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 uh, system becomes stronger and it's a little better adapted for the particular lifestyle that they're going to have. I think that that's probably the the wisest way. If anybody finds any information that contra uh, contradicts that, bring it up and let us talk about it so that we can figure out what the answer is specifically. But as my experience, as somebody who's worked in and lived in the dog profession for pretty much my entire life, um, these are the things that I understand. So it doesn't mean it's gospel. doesn't mean that we need to say it's the only way to be. It's just my suggestions on this. So moving on, let's see. We've talked about when to feed. We've talked about how much to feed, how to feed as far as, you know, as far as raw to kibble. And um, so let's talk about raw a little bit more. That's probably a good place to go. When we're doing raw food, again, dogs don't cook their food in the wild. So we want to make sure that the dogs have all the digestive enzymes. So when we're feeding raw food, we just feed raw food. Dogs eat primarily meat uh, in their diet, so they don't really need a huge amount of supplementation from that. Now, regular old meat like chicken breast that you're going to get from the store, uh, boneless, by the way, um, do not feed any sort of bird bones to, um, you know, to your dogs at all. When, um, when you're feeding this to them, do understand that they, that an animal in the wild is going to eat a lot of the bone, uh, a lot of the different things, you know, the cartilage, the organs and stuff like that whenever they're out in the wild. So we do want to try and supplement that with some other things. It's not hugely critical, but it's a good thing to make sure that they get all of their micronutrients by, you know, maybe putting in some, uh, some extra pieces. The good part about it is, is those extra pieces that, um, people don't eat as much are also, uh, pretty cheap. And you can a lot of times go and get them from the butcher. Just keep in mind that there are certain bones that the dogs can have, whether they're cooked or not makes a difference. So, um, uncooked beef bone is very good. Uh, cooked beef bone is less good, but it's not bad. Um, pork bone is, is good cooked, but hugely dangerous if it's not cooked. So do not give your dogs uncooked pork bone. Um, so 
uh, and any sort of bird bone, you just don't do. It's not worth the risk, so just don't do that because they splinter and then they can get caught up in their digestive tract and then you got a huge expensive surgeries to save the dog if you can even save the dog at all. So just don't do it. It's not worth it. And do not do uncooked pork. Once you cook the pork, it turns, it gets crumbly and it doesn't splinter anymore. So those are all good things to know. Um, so feeding raw is, is pretty simple. Um, you don't need to feed near the volume whenever you feed raw. So whenever you're dealing with, um, whenever you're dealing with a bowl full of dog kibble, it is going to have a lot more volume than, um, than a, uh, what you're going to feed them raw, because first of all, it's in pieces and the meat is not. So keep that in mind. And, um, you're still going to want to scale it down because the raw food is going to be much more nutrient rich. Otherwise your dogs are going to get you know, start gaining weight. Um, though it's not super critical because they actually will gain less weight from good raw food than they will from too much kibble. So that's all good. Now, um, uh, we got a couple questions in here. Um, what is the best, uh, what is the best option if there is food, food down all the time? So I personally do not do free feeding. Um, I don't think that there's necessarily anything wrong with it, but it, to me, it is a very big missed opportunity because there's a big context, which we're going to talk about here in a second when I actually go to feed my own dogs. And I'm going to show you guys that um, part of the dynamic that we should have as pack leaders is we should have um, we should have a good dominant position. Um, we should be the one that controls the resource. And if the resource is always down, then what it does is it devalues you as their leader and puts you in a, puts them in a position to where they don't think of you as the person that they need to go to for all of their needs. They think of you as, um, I mean, I don't know how to put this exactly right, but it's something similar to a servant that wanders around and just does all the things that they want for them and that needs to be taken care of. So I don't, um, I don't think that free feeding is great. Um, if you are free feeding, absolutely do not do the egg thing whatsoever. That's super dangerous because after that egg sits there, and even if just a little bit of it drips down into the other food, that's going to create a place where you're going to have bacteria get in, and then you're going to get some really sick animals and maybe even some sick humans on the, on the situation. I don't know about the latter, but that, um, would be, that would be a big problem. So, um, the next question is what is the best food to feed a Corgi? Um, that it, 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 you're not going to change the diet a huge amount per breed. Um, what you want to do when you're dealing with a Corgi is you're going to you're going to understand that their organs are very big for the size of the dog and their limbs are very short. So, um, we want to make sure that they're not getting a hugely fatty diet, um, and, and a huge carbohydrate rich diet. First of all, dogs in general don't need a carbohydrate rich diet. They don't get that in the wild. It's not something that they do. Um, so we want to keep that nice and low on the carbohydrates. So, um, that brings to the next question, uh, is what is the opinion on grain free and grain free is a big plus. I mean, like thumbs up on that there. It's not hundred percent critical. But again, we talk about how often does a dog in the wild eat corn? None. How often does it eat rice? How often does it eat all of these different vegetables and these different, um, you know, they might get some vegetables because they have some appeal to them, but grains, not really at all. So grain free is a good option. Is it worth, I mean, like, is it worth the price? Probably. Yeah. It's really a balancing act. There is no right answer or wrong answer. It's just we want to know how it's going to work out if we do it a certain way. So if you're going to free gra feed grain-free food, you're doing pretty well on the whole for your dog. Um, so the next thing I think we should get into now that we've handled all the questions that have come in during this live feed is, is we want to actually feed the dogs. So come here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera around so you can kind of get an idea of what the dogs are doing. We'll introduce you. This is my big Martha. She is a wonderful girl. I got her from actually a trainer that I hired out of Kansas City, and she had the opportunity to go to a really great school, and she could only take two dogs with her, and I opted to take Martha because I like Martha the best. 
she's a good girl. So she's very sweet, very protective, as a Mastiff usually is. And then we have Cinchman over there. I'm sure most people are familiar with him because he comes up in the videos all the time. So let's take a look at Martha because I've gotten her to a point where I like where her weight is. Um, with big dogs like her, we want this taper in the waist right here. We do not want big wide back, which a lot of times that's what happens with dogs that don't do as much moving is their back gets really wide. And uh, so if you see that really wide back, you want to start scaling the food down. Um, people are worried about... Um, frequency of food and um, when you think about a dog in the wild they don't get food every day so if you are getting to the point where you're still feeding the dog every day but you're only giving it just a little it's not going to kill the dog in fact it's going to put it in a good position to lose some weight and they'll actually feel better for it so cinch come here so cinch is actually pretty good he's a healer so he tends to be able to be a little bit more thicker, but he's also a very active dog and he carries a lot of muscle. And that's what we really want is we want to make sure that the ratio but of muscle is good, that they, they have good shape to them because good shape indicates good health. So um, if you have a dog that is really skinny but has no muscle, then we're looking at malnutrition. But if you have a dog that's, that is very lean in fat content but has good muscularity, then you don't need to worry about their weight. It's fine for them to be lean. We as Americans think about it as, you know, like everybody needs to be a little plump. And that's just not the case. It's not healthy. So we want to make sure that um, that our dogs stay nice and lean so that we can keep them around. Because Mastiffs uh, in general only live 10 years. And I would like to have her around longer than that. So... Um, oh, okay. Here we go. This is what we talked about yesterday. We... Um, we want to create a context, a, a, a word that tells them what time of day it is and whether it's time for food. So um, whenever we talk about food, we want to give the dog a command that means that lets them know that food is coming. So cinch, is it chow time? Is it chow time? It's time to eat? Good boy. Chow time. And so if you precede your feeding time with a word of some sort, then the dogs can learn that it's time. I feed my dogs in the kennel. There are lots and lots and lots of good reasons to feed a dog in a kennel because it takes away any sort of concern that they have for the food of whether or not they're going to be able to eat all of it before somebody's going to come and take it from them. And so it allows them to be more relaxed in their food, in their food eating process. And we want very relaxed dogs whenever they eat when you have food aggression one of the one of the or possessive nature about the food you get to um you can fix that by making sure that the dogs are very secure when they're eating nope so i've gone through the process of teaching the dogs that they need to wait for their food that is also very healthy the very first lesson a dog learns before it even leaves its mother is that we wait. Waiting is hugely important for dog psychology. They need to learn how to wait and they need to learn how to respect the authority and follow the directions. Otherwise, they um, end up acting on their impulses and getting themselves in trouble. So we're going to create a word that um, tells them to wait, which is just no, nope. It, and that lets them know because I make almost all things that I don't want to do the dogs to do is the word no. And then we want to let them know when it is time for them to eat and that they can go ahead and do that. So, okay, free. So, Cinch is a little bit of a pain on that. And sometimes he, uh, sometimes he uh, doesn't start eating until I give him multiple frees. And that's just a weird thing. But uh, honestly, the best thing to do about that is tell him the word that you want and then just walk away and leave him to it. And then he'll eventually start eating on his own and he'll find out he doesn't get corrected for that. And so it's obviously the right answer. So we want to make sure that the dogs eat in separate places. There's nothing wrong with that. It is a good context. It helps the dogs to want to be in their kennel more so. Um, it gives them a good reason to be in the kennel. And so we want to give them that opportunity so that the kennel becomes a good place and they are not hesitant to go in there. And um, free feeding, you don't get that because then the kennel's only context is containment and lack of freedom. So uh, we want to give them something good inside of their kennel. 
Um, and that's pretty much the big talking points on feeding. I mean, it's been a little bit of a video, but I uh, want to make sure that you guys get all the information that you can. And um, the dogs are very happy with this. They, it is a good routine. It's consistent. Um, I will talk about time of day of feeding. And the time of day is when you want to feed them. It doesn't matter at all. Um, in fact, I don't even feed the same time of day every day. This is, this is later than I do sometimes, and it's earlier than I do sometimes. I want to make sure that I feed whenever I choose to feed, and I don't feed when the dogs are telling me to feed them, because that means that they're commanding me, and that's the exact opposite of what we need. So I'm going to go ahead and let this be the end of the video. If you guys have any extra questions, feel free to comment in uh, the section below um, when you guys... Uh, get the chance go in there subscribe there is a little bell icon that turns the notifications on and um, especially for us being a very new YouTube page every single view makes a difference it helps us uh, to get the message out to more people so every time you watch it really does help so anyway I love you guys um, this is Luke Smith from the Pack Smith dog training and uh, we'll see you next time